I'm going to keep you guys in a bit of suspense here for a few minutes while we open up the mystery box that was shipped in for a repair. You guys will like it. I know you're going to like it. I got a big box in the mail. There's something to fix. Let's open it up and see what I got. It says it's heavy. It's 50 pounds. What could possibly weigh 50 pounds? Mystery package that came to me from Ontario. Guarantee it's not a CD player. The box says Integra CD player, but guaranteed it's not a CD player. What is it? It's an Akai reel to reel, a 4000 DS Mark II. I think that's the same one that I have. I do have the same machine myself, the 4000 DS Mark II with the one micron gap head. And you know, I really like this machine. Uh, I, I bought mine cheap. I paid $30 for mine. I bought it at a ham flea market, one of the last ones I was at uh, a couple years back. I don't know, probably five, six, seven years ago. Now I forget exactly when, but I was at a, a ham flea market and I was walking around just looking at stuff. And the guy had one, one sitting at his table. He had it on his booth. And he had it marked at 50 bucks. In fact, I saw I saw Paul, Paul uh, Carlson was there. He said hi to me and someone recognized him. It's one of my videos that I did a few years back when I went to a ham flea market. And uh, anyway, this was sitting there with a bunch of other stuff. And I walked around and I walked around. and I, walked. I was shooting the video and not really buying anything. And uh, looking at the, at the unit, the guy says... I tell you what, he says, I don't want to take it home with me. Will you give me 30 bucks for it? Like, yeah, okay, I'll give you 30 bucks for it. Best 30 bucks I ever spent. A great little unit. These things sound great. And uh, I know they sell for a lot more than that, but I paid $30 for mine. Like, I, I always get good deals on stuff. I never pay the eBay price that people tend to pay. This one here, the complaint on this is that the take-up torque is very low. That's what the complaint is, but uh, might be a little bit on the low side. They're not supposed to have huge, huge torque. You don't want to stretch your tape, but um, how about, oh, fast forward's got no torque. Yeah, fast forward's got no torque. In fact, it's got more torque on play. That, the reel he packed in with it, the whole weight of the unit was sitting on the reel. Kind of warped his reel. Oh, he's broken his reel. Well, this was sitting under the, under the machine in the box, and I guess when they banged it around in shipping, they broke the reel. So he's going to have to find a new reel or um, glue this one. I'll just put it back in the box, because I do have take-up reels. Yeah, this one here, the problem actually is not so much the play torque, because it's got quite a bit of play torque, but it has no fast-forward torque. Literally, no fast-forward torque. So it's going to be idlers, for sure, that need to be cleaned up. Maybe some rubber renew. First things first, I'll we'll take off the the head cover so that I can remove the front as this has to come off first and of course the, the pinch roll and everything to get at the idlers that are under here. So on this unit there's a, a small Allen key. Looking at the heads, they like to be in pretty good shape actually. The heads do not appear to be excessively worn on this. A little bit of a, there's a little bit of a groove here on the uh, record head. There's a, there's a little bit of a groove here, a little bit of wear on this head. But you know what? Considering the age of this thing, this these heads are actually in pretty good shape. I think the mine are in a little better shape because I don't think mine was ever used. I think the guy I got it from, he bought it and played a half a dozen tapes on it and then put it away. But uh, yeah, the heads aren't in bad shape. A little bit of wear. You can feel a little bit of a little bit of a groove, but that's not going to really affect the operation. Uh, as I say, there's a hex key that I got to remove to open up the switch. Is it one and a half, or is it two? Yeah, 
it's one and a half. So we just remove the knob, remove the head cover. We can clean this switch in here while we're at it. Just put those out of the way for now. We have to remove the pinch roller and the capstan. The holder has got to come off on this. No, it doesn't. So I'll leave that there. This is the speed for this one because this one uses a single speed motor. Like my other machine that I've got. Pinch roller is also, well, it looks like it's been sitting in the play mode for a while. A little bit of a dent there where it looks like it was sitting in the play, like engaged in play with the motor not running. But that should uh, work its way out. I don't see too much damage on this pinch roller. So I gotta remove the knobs as well. These ones are just a uh, standard Phillips screw that holds these ones on. And there's another one and a half millimeter hex key that holds on the pause lever. That's got to come off as well. I gotta take off the knobs and then the screws that hold the front panel on and then we can lift off this so there's four screws here and two more down here looks like this one's been rounded off a bit but it'll be removable that off first and then we can lift off oh two more another screw one more screw one more hidden screw there might be another one here too somewhere is there or is there not I think that's that's it I think yeah okay there we are we're in like Flynn so to see how this operates I can put the knobs back on these are the pop metal cams that break all the time on these, but they haven't broken on this one. This one maybe was uh, maybe it was a little better than some of the other ones. See that idler is not slipping. That's the clutch, and that's working. But when you put it into fast forward, it lifts up, and now it's slipping. Same idler is used for both, but one of them goes through, and it, this is this is free spitting. It's not like a it's not like the bearing or anything is worn out or dried up. As you can see, <clears throat> when you go into fast forward, the idler raises up, and it's slipping. But when I put it into play, it stays lower, and it actually has a better grip. It's actually turning the bottom. It's a little bit slipping a little bit but it's got a lot more torque. We're gonna put some rubber renew on this one and see if we can get this one here to, uh, to clean up a bit. And that should give me more torque. Some rubber renew on the q-tip. Get this soaked. You can see the oxidation is coming off this right away. I'll do both of the idlers. I'll do the rewind idler as well, obviously. Because if one's bad, the other will also be, will also be bad. And of course, as this dries, it'll, it'll get more torque.
And sometimes the the pulleys are are quite badly worn. Or the idlers, the rubber is worn, and we have to actually increase the the diameter of them slightly. It's got more torque than it did before, but it still doesn't have it still doesn't have what I want it to have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically glue a rubber belt around the edge of the tire. That will increase the diameter and give it something to bite into. So we'll take the idler off. You see, remove the E-clip, remove the idler, and I'm going to find a rubber tire, like a capstan type belt that will fit around here and I'm going to glue it to the edge. I think one of my four millimeter belts might fit this quite nicely. I have some two millimeter and four millimeter wide, but this one here I think one of the four millimeter belts will go on there quite nicely. So I've got this pack of belts and it came with a lot of really odd sizes that don't look like they're much use for anything, but you know what? They might just fit quite nicely around a tire where they can be glued in place and provide extra traction like retreading a tire. If we put the put the belt around the outside here and say it will be glued in place, which is going to make sure I got one that's that's tight enough that I can stretch it around here and then glue it in place. Might just be the right size actually. So if I put a tire around nice tight fitting tire or belt around the edge of the tire and then glue it in place, this might just do the trick. I can certainly test it before gluing it in place. Put this back on here and put it in fast forward and oh yeah, lots of torque now. Lots of torque. Of course the belt fell off because I hadn't glued it in place, but that will certainly fix the problem on this. So let me get some glue on here. We'll glue the belt in place once the glue sets up. We'll test it out. First, I'm going to put some cement. This is a rubber type cement around the perimeter of the cement is drying up too. Around the perimeter of the tire. Should be wearing gloves for this because I'm going to get black stuff all over my fingers. It's very sticky. But it will certainly fuse that on there. No problemo. Okay, now get the rubber belt and put it around the edge of the tire. Let it set up for a while. This might be easier said than done. I think I say that all the time. But some things just are easier said than done. So now that I've got the belt glued to the rim of the tire, um, it's probably not going to be quite as quiet because it's not quite as smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the rewind side and the forward side around because if it's a little more noisy on rewind it really won't be a problem but you don't want to have an idler rumbling away when you're playing a tape. You want the playback side to be nice and quiet. So we'll put the refurbished tire on the rewind side and confirm that it does have lots of torque, which it does, it has plenty of torque. It's actually making the clutch slip below, but on forward, nice and quiet. On fast forward, lots of torque, plenty of torque. Everything should work properly. I say rewind, rewind's gonna be a little bit louder. When it's together, it won't be as noticeable, but rewind will. This will probably wear its way down. It's just that it's a bit rough right now because of the glue and stuff. That probably will wear its way down a bit and it'll get quieter, but still. It's not so bad if it's if it's noisy on rewind as it is on play or fast forward because, well, when you're listening to a tape, you don't want to hear the noise of the idler rumbling away in the background. So while I've got this unit apart, I'm going to take this opportunity to put a little bit of lubricant onto the bearings here and uh, that way it'll be good for another 100,000 miles, as they say. One drop of oil onto the, the 
idler bearing. We don't want to put too much in because we don't want to uh, we don't want to uh, have it flying around. I'll now reassemble the unit so that I can test it. Remove power. Replace the screws. There was one screw that kind of got that somebody had kind of um, damaged before. I'm going to put that one under the under the under the other cover, just so you don't see it. Someone commented in my other video about hearing the eagle. Yeah, there's an eagle that lives in a tree across the street from me. And a few weeks ago, I think his mate was blown up in a, a hydro accident. There was a power outage, and apparently, an eagle had landed on power line and uh, became the conductor. And the eagle was holding a duck that it had picked up on the beach for dinner. And the duck survived, not for long though, because one of the neighbors took the duck up to the local veterinarian to have it, uh, let's just say, put out of its misery. Um, but uh, yeah, now the eagle has been chirping away every day so I get a sneaking suspicion it probably was his mate and he's now lonely he sits out there and chirps chirps all day every day leave the tape selector switch a shot of, of contact cleaner while we're in here this is to select the, the left channel the right channel or stereo What's funny is, you know, you gotta, you need a, to, to take that off, you need a tool. 1.5 millimeter hex key to remove this in order to take the, uh, the head shell off on this one. At least you can clean it though without uh, having to take it off. Okay, ready to test. I have just some 5 inch reel because I have a, a tape with music bakery content on it so I can play this back. It's 7.5 IPS, so I've already put the the um, adapter on. Just latch the reels in place. Now on this machine there's two ways of threading it. You can thread it with the auto stop or without it. When you have the power switch off the auto stop lever becomes the power switch shuts the power off. When this is on, the power is on, the motor runs constantly so you don't have to put it through this lever.
working good, but rewind. So we're going to rewind and fast forward the tape a few times. That noise probably will become less as it works in. It's just the reason why it's a little bit noisy like that is because uh, some of the glue, right, There's it's not perfectly smooth. So there's a little bit of glue that uh, has formed around the edge of the belt. It kind of oozed out when I was putting the belt on. Pretty, pretty slippery stuff too. That should, uh, I would think, will uh, subside. What I'll do is I'll let this thing just run in rewind mode. Over time it should polish itself down, wear down the, the high spots on it and it will be quiet. But I put it on the rewind side for a reason because, you know, you don't want it. You don't want to hear it when it's playing. You just want to hear the normal sound that the unit makes. Pause and start. You can do it that way too. You can pull it like that or push this button. Okay, tape counter is working. Just habit when I stop a reel-to-reel -reel machine, I always put my hand there just to make sure that the brakes stop it correctly. Because sometimes, you know, there'll be a bit of slack. So always a good idea when you're dealing with these older machines like this, unless it's got uh, motors, right? But um, some of them use um, direct drive motors, so they've always got a bit of a back tension, so they'll stop a little better, or they'll have better brakes on them. Uh, a lot of these uh, mechanical machines, it's always a good idea just when you're going to stop it. Put your hand there just to make sure that uh, you don't spill your tape. Same as on rewind, even though it's not doing it. It's probably a good idea just to be there. Especially if you're using different size reels. But as you can see, it's, uh, it's working. It's nice and quiet in the forward direction, which is what you want. I don't think that little bit of extra rumble on rewind is really going to be too problematic. Ideally, a new idler would be the choice, but you're not getting new idlers for these. And to send them out to have them redone is ridiculously expensive to have them redone. It's easy just to stick a flat belt of appropriate size over top of it, glue it in place, It'll give you all the torque you're ever going to need and get the unit back in service without spending a small fortune doing so. So I'm just rewinding the second tape and as you can already hear the noise on rewind now has dropped substantially and is continuing to get quieter. Where I'm standing now, which is about uh, two feet from three feet from the unit right at the camera here, it's about as loud as the background noise from the overhead fan. So it certainly has quietened down quite a bit. And it will continue to quieten down once a few tapes are run through it. And uh, the high spots on the idler, on the belt that I glued on, kind of wear their way down. It'll continue to get quieter. But this should be a long-term fix for this until the belt wears out. Should be a while. It's a new belt that's on there. And it's glued in place. So it should last until it either breaks or or wears out completely. Rewinding back to being in the tape. There's fast forward. This was recorded on my Tascam, or my TAC. So this is recorded, it's a four track tape. Only one side, both sides are the same. But I recorded um, one and three is recorded in uh, seven and a half and two and four, 
or recorded in 15 IPS. But of course, if you turn the tape over, yeah, one and three, seven and a half, two and four, 15 IPS. Has to be played back on my four track machine, obviously. But I did this, I recorded it on the uh, TAC 3340. Also, also on these machines, someone's probably going to scream about this. Uh, something I've been doing for years. Rather than stop it by hand or make sure the reel stops, I used to just throw it in a rewind and then stop it. It won't hurt them. As you can hear, it's getting much quieter. I'm going to run this tape back and forth a few more times and it should get the level of noise down to approximately what the other side is once the idler itself smoothens up a bit. All right, so this one's done. I'm just going to run this back and forth a few more times as every time I rewind on it, it's getting a little bit quieter and it should quieten down substantially. It's not too bad now. Anyway, uh, that's how you can repair an idler if you don't have access to one. And the good old rubber renew doesn't work because it doesn't work in 100% of the cases. Uh, it's fine if the uh, surface of the idler tire is just oxidated and hard, but uh, what happens when the idler wears down and it's now physically too small to make a good mechanical connection? This is one way that you can repair an idler if you don't have access to a tire to completely replace the tire. If you can get an idler tire for them, great. You can just pop it off of the plastic hub and put a new tire on. But the problem is getting these idler tires now is getting quite difficult. And I know there are some firms around that will make you one, but uh, they are always expensive. And um, you can get away with putting a, a piece of belt on it and gluing it in place and nine times out of ten it will work and you can do that with any type of idler little idlers and cassette decks as well if you can get small enough belts uh, the kit that I use is one of these kits I got off Amazon I think I paid about ten dollars for it Chinese belts right and they you can get them in two and four millimeter they're like capstan belts but they come with a lot of oddball sizes that are just too small for anything like they, they, you're not going to put a, a belt that that's that big in diameter as a capstan belt but for putting them around the tires and gluing them in place, they actually do a pretty good job. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Akai 4000 DS Mark II lives again. Thanks for watching.